So usually I do painting videos. Um, I want to do something a little bit different for a little bit. Uh, my day job is as a character effects artist in the movie industry, and uh, I've been using the software called Houdini, and it's really awesome, and I want everyone to use it, but it is super hard to use. It's like notoriously difficult. Um, so I want to make a video series about the Vellum Solver, and I guess it'd be kind of aimed towards character effects artists who might be used to Maya, and they're making that switch to Houdini. And you know, you already know the basics of a cloth solver, but there's a whole bunch of weird like gotchas and pitfalls in the vellum solver that I want to point out. And uh, it will hopefully make your lives a little bit easier. And maybe you'll like Houdini because it's really cool. Um, and I'll try to get, I'll, I'll do some painting videos later, but this is what we're doing right now. <laughs> so I've just got this simple setup here. I'm sure you've already poked around vellum a little bit just to try it out. And you're somewhat familiar with the basics. I just want to point out that, you know, you go into the vellum menu here and it might look a little overwhelming, like there's a ton of stuff. There's not really that much stuff. It's actually um, a little bit like end cloth where there's one main type of constraint and you can change the constraint type to be all kinds of different things that have similar settings. And uh, the other thing I want to point out is just that the nomenclature in Houdini is a little bit different than say Maya. In Maya, you're turning an object into cloth. In Houdini, you're adding constraints to it. And when you think of constraints, you probably think of something like this, where it's like, you know, cloth points attaching to another piece of geometry. In Houdini, um, the actual node that creates the cloth settings, that's also called a constraint. Uh, it's a little confusing, but I mean, I guess that's kind of technically accurate because the constraints are, you know, just springs in between the points. So you can see I broke that out uh, here. So left output is the geometry itself. The geometry itself has a few settings that the solver will be looking for, like drag and mass, uh, P scales, particle scale, which is the thickness of the cloth. And then in the middle output, you have the constraints. The constraints will have things like uh, rest length and dampening. Um, and then on the right is the collisions. And so basically what these nodes do here is they're just creating the, the attributes that the solver inside the DOP network will then understand as cloth settings. So anyhow, that's how that all works. Okay, so I want to show you how, uh, how keyframing works in Vellum. It's a little non-intuitive. Your first thought's probably going to be that you just grab your, you know, like a bend stiffness and set some keyframes on it. And because we're in SOPs, that's actually not going to work. The keyframes have to happen inside of the DOP network. And so your next thought is going to be like, right, I can make a vellum constraint inside of the DOP network and then have it update each frame and then, you know, set my keyframes in here. And that might sort of work, but it's not doing what you think it's doing. It's not updating just this one, uh, this one attribute it's actually recreating the entire constraint every single frame, uh, which is really computationally expensive. And so that's not what we want. And so what we want to do is actually a little weird. Um, we want to say you want to change the, the bend stiffness. You have to make an output group and give it a name. And so now all the bend constraints are going to be in that output group and also write yourself a note that you are that you've keyframed that or maybe even just set a keyframe on this even though it doesn't do anything just so you remember um because otherwise um you're going to come back to the sh shot or something days later and be changing the stiffness and wonder why it's not not doing anything so after you set that output group di dive into the dot network and what you want is the vellum constraint uh property and hook that up and you want it to affect just the group that you set this whatever group um, oh and also if you find that the the group that you made isn't showing up here sometimes you just need to hit uh, rewind to reinitialize the solver and then it'll probably pop up and so then in here you can choose uh, what you want to key in this case we'll key the bend stiffness um, set a key here, set a key here, 
And now if we uh, run the simulation, we'll see that about halfway through the solve, the bend stiffness will change. All right, so there you go. You can see the bend is changing partway through. And uh, oh, just so you know, this, this value here uh, no longer means anything. It's being completely overwritten by the value inside of the DOP network. And so there you go. That's how you do simple uh, keyframes. And it's a little tough because if you set a bunch of keyframes, like this, like you'll have a whole bunch of Vellum constraint properties and it gets kind of out of control. It's really not ideal, uh, but it is just sort of, it is what it is. And we just have to kind of work with this. So sometimes, or pretty often, you're going to want more complicated keyframes on a per point basis or something like who, who knows what you want to do. Um, in this case, I have a volume selected group and I want to have this drive the animation. And so I've got a uh, cloth constraint here and I've got the pin to animation set to this group that's moving. Uh, that pin to animation is creating a attribute on the geometry at the point level called stopped. And as the group or as the box uh, moves off of that, off the points, the stopped value switches from one to zero. So that's, that's the attribute I want to bring into the DOP network. And to do that, I can hop into the DOP network and create a wrangle node, geometry wrangle, uh, connect it in. And so all I'm looking for is that I just want to set that stopped attribute to, oh, <laughs> before I do this, yeah, jump over to here. Uh, so this kind of works like, you know how when you make a, uh, at the SOP level, you make it like a point wrangle or something and you know you have like the different inputs on the top of it inside the dop network when you do a wrangle it's like the same thing uh but for some reason they're like over here and you can set them to point to a sop and so then uh, i can point it to that out geo node that was this one right here and so now uh input one is connected to out geo and so then I can bring that value in. It's in, and this is this is another confusing thing in Houdini. So it says input one, but since you know in programming you count starting at zero, so input one is actually input zero, and we're looking for the stopped attribute, and uh, on each point. So now when it sims it's going to check that, that point attribute on each frame. And so there you see it kind of loosening up and unpinning as it goes along. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I, man, I actually, I feel like this is almost easier than the vellum properties node. It's, it's to me more simple. Uh, one thing to watch out for, though, is not all the properties are on the out geo node. Some of them are on the constraints. So say if you're changing the rest length, uh, that's a that's a constraint node thing. So when you make your geometry wrangle here, um, you're going to be like, oh, I can just do... Um, Let's see, point that to constraint, and I'd be like, oh, I can just do float, uh, oh, what was it, rest length equals, or let's, let's do something simple. We'll just multiply it by itself, 1.02. Let's make it a little bit larger each frame. And so then you go over here and you hit play, and you're like, like oh, why is it not working? It's not, or, I already know it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is the data bind is connected to the geometry. And what we want is a, uh, the attribute we're after is actually in the vellum object on the constraint geometry. 
not the not the geometry geometry. So in the data bindings, you need to set this to constraint geometry, and then you're gonna hit play and it's not gonna work. And you're gonna be like, oh, why is it not working? It's not working because uh, that uh, rest length is actually a primitive and it's running over the points. That's gonna, you have to run it over the, the thing it's the correct uh, type of attribute. So now it's actually gonna work and it's gonna grow as the simulation goes on. So anyways, uh, so that's, that's how you do the kind of more fancy keyframes. And honestly, I feel like this is easier than using the, uh, the Vellum properties node. You just have to be careful uh, whether you're using geometry or constraint geometry and just keep an eye out for that and uh, whether you're running over primitives or points. So uh, that's all there is to it. So that wraps up uh, keyframes.